I'm Dr. Caroline Neef and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. And today I'm going to talk about how to make your home a haven, which is so good for your mental health. It's just another way to help you clean up your mental mess. And I, I really work a lot on this myself. So that's why I wanted to share this with you because it's just, I think, so important. And it's something that we can do and it's manageable. But before we begin, if you want to listen to my podcast ad-free and listen to bonus content and live Q&As, subscribe to my Patreon account. The link and the details will be in the show notes. And this podcast is for educational purposes and not medical. If you need medical advice, please contact the appropriate medical professional. And now on to today's podcast about making your home a haven. Okay, so... When the world feels like a mess, which kind of happens a lot lately, I think it's like it feels like such a mess, and it's important that your it really is important that your home is a haven, a place where you can rest and relax and feel happy. And thankfully, there are many ways we can create this. Now, why I think this is so relevant to today, and I know you know my answer, is because we work from home. Guys, we work from home more now than ever before, as we know. So it's so hard to distinguish between work and home and these advantages of both. And I'll do a podcast on this. But I want to just talk today specifically about even if your home is also your office, what are your boundaries? How are you still keeping your home home part and your office office part? And how can you keep your home a haven? Can you even if it's the same environment? So, for example, in our Dallas home, we have literally converted the entire down floor area and part of the third floor into an office. We've got a full TV studio in our apartment area. This is where I am at the moment. And we have in our area that normally is our sort of lounge, sitting room, breakfast room area that's become a full on office. Our actual dining room has become an office. So... We've had to realize, okay, how are we going to make this distinction? Because otherwise you just kind of never leave the office. I think you can all relate. So making a home a haven is how we've dealt with that. So the haven concept is making it beautiful and whatever. So I didn't turn it into an office looking place. I made it even prettier. Prettier by doing things like bringing some of the outside inside, which is one of the tips. So bringing the outside in told you point number three first. This was supposed to be point number three, but it worked better here. <laughs> you can plan a podcast, so then when you do it, it works better to do it the other way around. So I am very determined to bring flowers in my house. We always try and have flowers in the house. I keep the door open as much as possible to let the sunshine come in. So I'm sure by now you've heard of the, the phrase plant mom. And these are people that love filling their homes with indoor plants and greenery. But this isn't just a social media trend. Fresh living greenery can have profound positive effects on our mental health, helping us calm down, breathe better, and feel more at peace in our living environment. So whether that's flowers or pot plants or whatever, I have to get things that, you know, that like flowers are good because they're there for a week and then you throw them out, or pot plants that can live in case I forget to water them because I'm not at the best at doing that and remembering to water them. But we've changed that. We've really gone to town to do that. There was such an interesting study done where they, in a gym actually, they, they turned the whole one wall because it was kind of under within a hotel underneath in a sort of basement area. So it was really dark and dingy. And so they put all around the walls, they put the mirrors and then they also put greenery, beautiful pictures of greenery and forests and whatever. So it was reflected in all the mirrors. And there was a sh complete shift in people's neurophysiology and the workout routine and everything having just looking at the picture of the plant. <laughs> so that is interesting compared to actually when you bring the outside in. Another thing you can do is, you know, keep your blinds open, keep your curtains open, put brighter, you know, put so you can bring brightness in so it's not dark and dingy. Some offices I've been into when people were still working more in offices, it was one of the companies that we contracted to that did work for us. I used to like freak out every time I walked into the office because every single one of their offices, there were no windows, the lights were off and the only light was coming from their computer screen. And I mean, that is guaranteed to mess up hormones and like it's just not healthy at all. You want as much light as possible, as much natural light as possible, as possible that you can you know, get in that into that environment. OK, and they used to know when I came there, they used to suddenly like, you know, turn on the lights and, and open the doors and open the blinds and that kind of thing. So it's really is, is relevant. 
The second thing, besides bringing the outside in, is also making your home as pretty as you can. You know, I love art. I have a lot of art on my walls. I make a lot of effort to make, I've made it as much as beautiful as I can. And I'm always trying to add to that beauty. I focus a lot on keeping it tidy. It's so easy if you are suddenly using the dining room that was once the dining room as a conference room and also now to doubling up as a, as a, where we do workouts because sometimes we don't have time to get to the gym, so we do it there. If you just leave the mats on the floor and leave the blinds closed and leave the books all over the table, it just becomes a huge mess. So I never allow that. At the end of every day, that at the end of a workout, the mats are rolled up, everything's put away, the blinds are opened, the tables are cleared. At the end of a meeting, everything's tidied up and everything's put back. So that it, and it doesn't take long if you're in an, if you're in a routine and you're organised. So keep things tidy. Things like working from home as well. Make your bed. You know, tidy up your room. Open the blinds. It's so tempting to just like not make your bed. Be very disciplined about keeping order in your home and your environment as tidy and as pretty as possible because that will make you feel good about yourself and it'll make you feel good about being in that room. Otherwise, it becomes, it can dry, it can make you feel quite drained, the darkness, the un, blinds not open, the beds not made, you know. Clean your sheets, make your beds, tidy your room, put those things away. Keep it as pretty as you can. That'll make it, make you feel so much better about being at home, working at home, making your home a haven in this time where so many of us are working from home. Another thing is in, intentionally bonding with your loved ones at home. It can be so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day activities of just living, working, surviving, that do you really take the time to sit down and tune in? Or are you just having conversations with your husband or wife or kids or partners or whatever, just about the kind of, you know, work stuff and day-to-day -day necessities, you know, dinner, this, that? Or are you really sitting down on the floor and talking about, you know, listening to what that other person's going through or dreams. The other night I sat down on the floor in my daughter's, one of my daughter's rooms and we'd had like such a long day and we were tired and, you know, we just sat down on the floor and my two, I've got four children, three of them work for me, two of my daughters are, um, they travel, kind of travel with me so when we're here they're with us and they were with us and we'd had a long busy day. And we were sitting on the floor and, and they are planning a whole travel. They're going, to, they're going to be traveling all over the world and they're planning their travels. So instead of talking about work, which was so easy to do because we hadn't finished everything and, you know, we're working from home and all kinds of stuff, we actually intentionally sat looking at photographs and planning these trips and where they where, you know, uh, she was telling me about where she's going and we were looking at these beautiful pictures of these countries and oh and we've traveled extensively we're very fortunate to have traveled extensively and it was just so nice it was so refreshing to bond and to just hear my daughter's plans and what she wants to do and why she wants to do that and and it was a sharing moment. It was a lovely bonding moment. And then my other daughter came and joined in and she was talking about her plans. And we were, then we had brought back some memories of when we traveled before. And so it became a beautiful bonding moment. But we were intentional about that because we were tired and we could so easily, which we've done before, slip into work stuff and then be so exhausted, gone to our own rooms and done our own thing. And that bonding time would have gone. So that bonding became a haven. And, and directly from that, that was kind of early evening. We then went downstairs and we then made this made a whole meal together and we planned this whole thing and we were eating and chatting and we were just so happy and animated and excited. There was from the previous conversation with the bonding. But if we had just had the work conversation and the day-to-day -day stuff, there's a chance we wouldn't have, you know, been so animated when we made dinner. We wouldn't have made as nice of a dinner. We wouldn't have enjoyed the dinner as much. You know, so the haven part came in with the bonding, with the beautiful bonding extending from the conversation into the dinner, the planning, even the tidying up together. And then we decided to take our little cute puppies for a walk together afterwards. You know, it was just one thing traveled into another. And then the next morning when we all woke up, the first thing we did was our workout. We did it together. It was hilarious. I couldn't get anything right because I'm not very coordinated. And the, my two girls are so coordinated and they're doing these beautiful, heavy, we were doing this sort of heavy a yoga workout and with some cardio and core and you know I just I could not get some of these moves so there was a lot of hilarity which just I just said the whole day was just amazing you know so those are making your home a haven there's been times where we've done a workout we've just done it in a rush we got irritated we didn't do it properly we just didn't really talk or connect and there was there, the bonding wasn't there so the haven kind of thing went away so 
playing board games. We love to play board games, and we make it a, a thing. We have, we have, because I have adult children. We all work hard. We plan get together times, dinners, meals, holidays, because we're all in different parts of the country, and and we travel a lot and so on. And so we make the intentional over special times, holidays, birthdays, and things to get together. And we always do make a big deal about meals, a big deal about playing game, board games. So we play a lot of board games. And they are hilarious. And I mean, some of these board games are just, I mean, they're so ridiculous, but they're so much fun. And so we, even if sometimes you just don't feel like it, you know, we've been like over Christmas, one of the days we were lying on the beach, we were tired, we came back hot and bothered and not bothered, we were totally happy, but we didn't feel really think, have the energy, we thought, should we play a board game? It's too much effort. We played the board game. We had the best time. We laughed so much that we were more energized and it was just beautiful, beautiful bonding. Okay. Watching funny TikToks and videos, we love doing that. And we, um, like a lot of families, we have a group chat going. And every day there's always like, watch this funny TikTok. And, you know, did you see this in the news? And so we use that group chat to bond as well. We connect and share about things that frustrate us, that irritate us, that we're happy about, that we're excited about, that are funny. So that funny TikTok that we've maybe, two of my kids were with me and we watched that. We then send it to the whole family so the whole family can enjoy it all moving towards bonding and making your home a haven because you in your homes when you send it you're in your homes when you receive it and you're sharing across space and you're sitting there in your home and you're laughing and it's all creating a beautiful atmosphere that's bringing up beautiful healthy thoughts generating all these positive photons the atmosphere is changing you know what it's like if someone's mad or you're cross and you're not dealing with it you can cut the atmosphere but when you make your home a haven the atmosphere is different. This is quantum physics. This is the law of love. It actually really does happen. The frequency of love is, is much greater than the frequency of toxicity. So by making your home a haven, you ensure to, that you can get that kind of vibe going in your home. Another thing we like to do is share cute pictures of our dogs. And I'm sure, I mean, we're not the only families that do that. I'm sure you do. But I'm just reminding you, are you doing it often or do you hardly ever do that? Do you intentionally look for ways that you can connect and bond? With your, with your loved ones, because that bonding makes your home a haven. Okay, and then practicing mental self-care in your home will make your home a haven. Often we tend to focus on our physical needs and forget to meet our mental needs. But mental self-care is as important as eating, hydrating, exercising, because we don't even go three seconds without thinking. So this includes things like self-regulation. And I speak so much about that as a cognitive neuroscientist on this thing, on this podcast and in my books and in my app self-regulation is just so important it's the most effective way to manage unhappiness in the moments and boost my mood is to practice intentional directed self-regulation i do that using my neurocycle so self-regulation is really important because if i'm looking after myself in the ways that and i've told you a lot about my neurocycle and self-regulation on this podcast but by me self-regulating myself I'm the mom in the home and I'm the core of the business and I'm generating the emotional tone. And so I'm very aware of that. And even, and it's not only me, but obviously my husband, who's also works in the business and my kids. And we create to, to, to I, you know, whoever's, whoever's in a, whoever's working hard at mental self-care will, will generate that positive atmosphere and that positive setting the, of the tone in the environment, making that home a haven and not a horrible place to be. So we're going to have days where we off and that's where we give each other space and boundaries. But if we all are collectively working on our mental self-care and are more self-regulated and feel that sense of peace and rest in ourselves, we're going to interact with others better. And then the home doesn't become the stressful Ah, oh, everyone's worked up environment. It becomes one of, okay, I'm having a mental self-care break. I'm looking after myself, so I'm not generating all that toxicity and working everyone else up. Or I'm giving that other person the space that they need. So we're collectively working on our self-regulation, which helps tremendously. So in summary then, I mean, there's so many more things that you can do. But in summary, these are just a few little things that really... I really cannot recommend enough that we go out of our way to, to make your home a haven, bringing the outside in, making it pretty, the paintings, the whatever, tidying up, keeping your house organized, self-regulating the mental self-care, and working out ways of finding ways to uh, specific, um, intentionally making ways to bond with your loved ones. And those are three major things that you can do, but they are, and they're pretty easy, all of them to do. They just require you getting yourself into the habit of doing them, but they will radically change how you feel, how your home feels, and how people are responding to you in your home. 
Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this has helped you. Look forward to seeing you next time. And send me your questions. I love answering questions in these podcasts as well.